So, first off, I do have my banner from Japan, so I'll let me present this to you. And secondly, here is my my rotary blazer. I, I'm just going to put this on and then show everyone what this is all about. So, I'd just like to tell you the story behind the blazer and why I chose to do it kind of like this. Uh. So, ah, a pencil thing. Uh, you have batteries to light up? You know, I don't have batteries. I just, <laughs> so I, you can see, you can see I do have um, the, the candy canes here that do light up, but the battery blew out. It's been two years. <laughs> so, that's something is pinned to my back here. Uh, but I, I okay? just, yeah, fix it. Managed to fix it. Okay. 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 So, I probably won't give the whole presentation in this because it's kind of uncomfortable, but I just want to show everyone. I'll just take a step back here and, and how this actually really came about for me. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and I was born in Bayview Houses, or that's known as a project, or the slums. And when I was young, education was my locomotive to success. You know, I, I studied middle school, worked hard, got the good grades. And then just by chance, and I believe in the man above, he gave me an opportunity to join this program called A Better Chance. And A Better Chance offered me a full scholarship to study here in Appleton, well not here, but in Appleton, for high school. And first and second year, third year comes around, and the story is, I was in my Spanish class one day, and my Spanish teacher was just like, does anyone want to join this thing called Rotary? It's, I think it will send a student out for a year, and yeah, she didn't really do a good pitch. Race, uh, she's hopefully she's not watching this, but like, uh, but you know, she she kind of just said this thing, and I was like, you know what, I'll try it. No one else raised their hand, and I said I'll try it, and then I showed up. I sh I went to the uh, initiation or orientation. No, oh, well, kind of addressed, introduced the Rotary to the, to the public, and I said, okay, I'm definitely signing up for this, and. It was, yes, okay, I would, had an interview, and then this is when I know I'm, like, I really believe that I'm blessed, and it's, it's not hard work, this is not luck, this is, I couldn't do anything to do, to have this blessed, blessing upon me, and what happened was, I did an interview for Appleton, and they loved me, for the Appleton Rotary Club, sorry, and they loved me, but what happened was they, they didn't accept me. And then soon after they said, don't worry, don't, 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 don't hang up yet. <laughs> well, well, we pulled your name over to Green Bay and we want you to do an interview there. And that was like a new light for me. And I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to get this thing. And surely enough, I came in, I, I was set. I'm sure you can probably see it in my face in the interview that I was going to go to Japan. And then I asked every question and then that was it. I'm going to take this jacket off. Uh... Sorry. But, you know, so what happened to me, you know, going to Japan, I didn't know the language. I just knew a couple words. And, you know, for the first, has anyone done an exchange here? Okay, so for the first two weeks, it's, it's fun. You know, everyone wants to speak to you in English and it's fine and everything. But after about three weeks, Everyone expects you to be fluent in a different language, especially <laughs> Japanese. So everyone was kind of upset with me for not learning Japanese. And the first thing I do want to talk about was having to learn a new language. And that forced me into this concept of mastery. Has anyone read the book uh, Mastery by either Robert Greene? Okay. So mastery is a process of, of when you actually master something and become very skilled at it to a point where it becomes natural. And people often mistake this with talent, but it's just a lot of hard work, consistent hard work. So having not being able to speak the language, it took a, it had, I wouldn't say, it, it had negative impact on me because I'm a vocal person. I'm always commanding all of my language, all of my conversations. I'm the leader of the group and I'm very expressive. I, I, sorry, I, I express myself a lot. So to have that language stripped away from me, it really, it really took a jab at my personality because I wasn't able to, 
to really say what I wanted to say. And instead of saying, oh, I like the movie because this part and this part and this part, I just said, okay, I like the movie. And after four, five, six, seven months of just blocking myself out, then not knowing the language become, cause it very, became a very difficult process. So I talked about it forced me into this thing called mastery. I had to learn each and every single day one word, one sentence, one conversation, one kanji. There's 2,000 kanji symbols. You know, I, I've got a good grip of, of the basic uh, amount of kanji that I need to basically read pretty e easily. So, and so having that experience, it taught me to take on projects much more level-headedly, if that makes sense. So I look at the project, I say, okay, for the first month or two, I'm really going to suck at it. And I'm, I'm okay with it. And so I'm able to address longer projects with a more level head, and I'm able to kind of suppress those feelings of not having that instant success. So I would have to say that learning a new language really taught me how to address long projects and to keep consistent and hard work on a consistent basis. Secondly was the culture. And there's a ton of differences. I can, I can talk about it for another four hours, but one of the main things was a collectivist society versus an individualistic society. In Japan, everything is, everything is formed in groups. And you can even see by the flag, there's, I think there's uh, seven islands, but there's only one circle. And versus the American flag, there's 50 states and there's 50 stars. So it really, it really, it got me thinking a lot more wholesome in, in terms of wanting to fit in the group, not always wanting to stick out, and wanted, wanting to kind of move in a, in a collective movement. And I don't have my size on me, so I'm, I might forget what I wanted to say. But uh, yes, yes. So being in that type of society where everything, everybody moved in groups, it made me want to not only just be within groups, but also move different, move other people in my direction. I think before Rotary and my time in a better chance, I was so focused on my personal grades and my personal accomplishments and my accolades that I was so into just myself and my, my accomplishments. But going to Rotary and, sorry, going to Japan and everyone's like, okay, we move together. So also bringing other people into this direction has been one of my motives. Just an example of this, there was one time my, one of my classmates, they moved to, in Japan, they moved from Osaka to Spain on a trip. And all the students wanted to kind of give them a gift. And I made the decision to, because he really liked football, or soccer, sorry. He really liked soccer. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to buy him a, a soccer ball, a nice soccer ball. And I went to the mall, I bought him a very expensive soccer ball, and I said, you know what, I appreciate your time with me. You're one of my good friends. And for some reason, I got scolded. Like, I, it, it, was, it was wrong of me to buy this person a gift. And can anyone think why it was wrong of me to buy this person a gift? No, you just really can't. It's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just so opposite of what we think. So it was the fact that I took it upon myself individually to give a gift to someone else when there was a class of other 30 students. So it was very selfish of me. I should have bought, I should have, sorry, like, as a class, we should have came up with a gift together and then presented it to him. And I was like, wow, you know, I understand. You know, so I'm very sorry. And, you know, it was stuff like that. I mean, there's a ton of stories I can sit and tell you. I'll, I'll stay for, like, individual questions. But stories like that of having to work in a group has always made me want to pull people with me and in, that, in a in a greater direction. And so since coming to Japan, sorry, after Japan, I, actually, I'm gonna pause that. Again, I don't have my slides. I am kind of over the place, sorry about that. So before I left Japan, my birthday is on July 19th. And I wanted to do one thing. I said, before I leave, I have to climb Mount Fuji. Has anyone climbed a mountain before? It, oh, eh, it, how long, how many days did it take you? Two days, two days, right? Correct. Oh my, I didn't know what I was in for. 
Um, so Mount Fuji is, is the tallest mountain in, in, in Japan. I think maybe Asia, I'm not sure. But it was a two-day trip up to this thing. I thought it was going to be a fun adventure. But, I mean, all those metaphors about climbing the top of the mountain, reaching the top of the mountain, it's like all real, just physical. And for my 18th birthday, I became a man. I was on top of Mount Fuji. I didn't see anything because I, I was above the clouds. But, you know, being on top of a mountain feels pretty good. And it's just that feeling of what I said at the beginning of this speech. I said, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, from the slums, like from the projects. Like, and I'm on top of this mountain. <laughs> and, uh, like, it's, it was, it was, I didn't get emotional at the time, but when I think about it, like, how did I get on the top of a mountain in Japan? And being that where I'm from, this is 0% possibility of that ever happening. So what I really want to talk to you today is, is not most about what happened in Japan. I can talk to you about that for hours, but I want to talk to you about how that actually, those times in Japan actually impacted me, you know, after coming back home. And the first thing I did after coming back to Japan, this is, is why I apologize for not being here for two years. I immediately went straight into London, where I now study international business at Kingston University. Uh, it's my second year, my first year. Hey, sorry, so Japan, London. Then it's my second year. So my first year, I spent some time working at different marketing companies. Tried that. Last summer, I, I worked at, a, at a, one of the biggest African-American banks in, in the States. And I was working directly with the chief of staff and the CEO and, and the marketing department and the, the bank security acts. I was all over the place within the bank. That was a very good experience. I was doing hands-on work. But I was like, I love the internship. I don't want anyone to watch this video and say I didn't love the internship. But I didn't really necessarily love the lifestyle of it of work hard and then and then so nine to, nine to five I'll, I'll work you know continuously continuously hard but I wanted something else out of it so I said you know what I'm going to start my own brand and I would I was working nine to five and I would come home two hour commute I was in New York at the time so from seven to two I was just writing things down and making presentations and presenting it to myself printing things out you know and I came up with this with this brand, I'm Amadeus Frazier, and what I wanted to show you over the past year or so, I've just been kind of preaching like my principles, my philosophies, and telling people that essentially, what I, in one sentence, what I usually preach is, listen, we, have, we only have one life, you know, so whatever you want to do, just do it. I don't, don't care about, you know, the outcome or the results, whatever you want to do, just Whatever you want to do, just do it. That's what I mainly pretty much teach in my brand. And also, I've recently started this, reaching out to people in Japan, because I, I wanted to you know, help, help them out as well. I started my second brand called Amachan, because in, I'm, in Japan they call me Amachan, because I'm a day so Amachan. So I said, you know, I, w I really want to teach these students how I taught myself Japanese, because one of the, the things is, when the Japanese students learned English, they weren't getting anything out of it. Like, I would look at the exams. Like, during exam time, I would sit in the back of the class, and then during, the teacher would turn around, rest on the board, and like, things would start flying across the classroom because they were throwing papers you know, across the classroom with, with answers on it. Like, they just so they, basically it was cheating during exams. And I'm like, wow. One, they really looked like ninjas. And then, and, and two, I was like, you know, it really goes to show that they're not learning anything. So I said, you know what? Let me teach them how I, I study English, sorry, to study Japanese, and maybe it'll help them. So over the past couple, two weeks or so, I've partnered up with my school in Japan. And now I, on Facebook Live, which is not running now, on Facebook Live, I just take songs and I translate it from Japanese to English. And that's what I did in Japan. I took songs from Japanese from Japanese, and I just okay, wrote the lyrics down, I sung it in my head, I acted it out, I saw the lyrics, I saw it, the, the music videos, and it kind of just, it really resonated with me. And so I just do the same thing on Facebook Live, and my, my principal loves it. So, and, so basically, guys, so after, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but after my time in Japan, I really focus less on myself and more about, okay, how can I start giving to other people? Because I really don't believe that age is, is not a matter. 
I don't have to get a degree to finally start giving, giving back. So with the brand, with Amachan, and that's been my main focus. And today I want to, I want to announce something that no, no one has ever heard besides my mother, because I told her two days ago, was the fact that, again, <laughs> this, is, this is a 0% chance of this ever happening. I mean, I, I had a map of where I was originally from, and I don't know if anyone knows the structure of a project building, but it literally is just a box, right? And then you have all these buildings within a box, probably 20 stories with over 100 families in each building. And within this box, perfect. Within this box, you have like your middle school right here, your elementary school right here, and your high school right there. Then you have your, your local stores, your barbershops. So basically, what a, a, a slum is supposed to do, it's supposed to contain the poverty. You know, a kid is never supposed to think, okay, let me get out of this. And like, just like I said, you know, from here to Appleton, from Appleton to Japan, and now London, it's just... It's just all been a blessing, and I really want to make, I really want to start a journey where I can start giving back to these kids and giving them opportunities like this. You know, but Rotary does is a, is a great job. How I want to extend this to people who have never heard this before, who, who never heard of Rotary, who have never heard of a place called Moto, Croatia, or Japan, or even Green Bay. So, what I've been working on for the past three weeks strong. By myself, quietly, no one has ever knew about this. Uh, sorry about that. I'll just go around and show everyone. Cause I'll just go around. Uh, cool. I have 10 minutes, so I'm fine. Perfect. Perfect. Um, what I want to show everyone is perfect. So, again, I really do think you know, my my story is just it's just a zero percent chance of that ever happening. Someone else. So, I wanted to reach out to other students, to kids of poverty, not necessarily because of their grades, but just because of you know their character and present something that I would like to call Rotary Reach. And I'll just go around and show this. Oh, just go around and show this everyone. Um, Rotary Reach. Uh, so, it's a concept I thought of mainly because I just want to give other students the opportunity to 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 have vision and. And, and just dream bigger than the community that's, that's directly in front of them. So I would say I can't do this by myself. I've, I funded this trip. Tomorrow I'm having another event that's, that's funding this. Sorry about that. Uh, next, I'm meeting up with my teacher in Appleton, my, my principal. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to Japan and meeting up with my principal. And I really want to make sure that by next year, we can send one student on a trip. And I have a three-year plan written out and how, we, how we're gonna, I wanna execute this, but the first three years is basically about safe, safe investments, making sure we're taking baby steps and getting kids out and seeing the world one student at a time, and then we'll start expanding after three years.